Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this film I'd like to show you how to do some embellishments on your tire in order to add some treads and other things that uh, you might find uh, useful. There's a couple of things we can do. You could do some revolve features where uh, you can take a revolve uh, sketch here and add some elements to it. For instance, if you want to add some treads to it, perhaps you can put some holes in it. And probably the most striking one would be like one right down the middle and maybe some on the side. Maybe make these equal to each other sort of thing. Uh, maybe make this one and that one mirror that across. So they have a symmetric relationship here. And then, uh, you know, perhaps you could take this line, turn it into a construction line, and just draw some lines from perhaps from there to there, quadrant to quadrant there, quadrant to quadrant here, quadrant to quadrant there. Turn these into arcs by doing the trim tool. Trim that out, trim that out, trim that out, trim that out. And uh, let's put a dimension in on, let's say, one of these. Maybe go over halfway, maybe make that one inch. Put a radius dimension on that, point into 1.5. And now we're ready to go. If we go to rebuild, bang, got some trends. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's try something else. Control Z a couple times, let's go back to our original sketch. And uh, something else we could do is we can uh, take a plane and elevate that off of uh, off the tire a little bit and then project a, a sketch onto that plane. Now we can use the wrap function. I'm going to warn you right now that the wrap function has got some uh, limitations to it. The problem with the wrap function and it allows you to take a sketch on a plane and project it over a curved surface which would seem almost ideal in a situation like this. But the problem with the wrap function is it doesn't allow you to draw outside of the boundaries of the tire and it doesn't allow you to do slight contours either and uh, kind of trips up in the geometry if you're to draw something like an X like what we're going to draw right now but uh, I'll discuss that and I won't demonstrate it because it's um, you know it takes a little bit of time but let me show you another option and what we're going to do is we're going to take that top plane we're going to copy that top plane up and maybe go up about five inches and what it is I grabbed the top plane and moved it with the control key down which makes a copy of it brings up this dialog box and it gives me my references was just the top plane parallel at uh, five inches above the other top plane and go to green check mark. Don't forget to rename your features by the way. I didn't hear and I'm not going to right now because this is just for demonstration. And I don't want to waste time doing that. So let's go normal to that plane. And take a look at that. So it's just a little bit off of uh, off the tire. And we can take that plane and stretch it a little bit. Of course that plane goes infinitely in all directions, but the plane, the portion of the plane that we're going to be playing with, we want to make sure it's a little bit bigger than that. So let's do this. Let's uh, draw some geometry in here. Go to sketch. Let's just draw a diagonal line on that top plane, kind of by the origin perhaps. And let's also do, do this. Let's take a center line and draw it in a similar orientation. It's like the midpoint of that center line. Go to the projected origin, make those coincident to each other. Maybe make these two uh, parallel to each other. And maybe make these two, select like these two, get a mirror. Put that on each side. That uh, works out a little bit better than doing the offset because the offset you have to offset on one side and then you have to offset on the other side if you're going to choose the center line for that. And uh, let's connect these guys down here. Connect these guys. You notice we're going to get a perpendicular uh, relationship in here. If you don't get it here, let's go ahead and uh, establish one. What we're going to do is we're going to go off here just a little bit. And, um, yeah, so we get a kind of a sketch pattern that looks like that. What we want to do is we want to also do a center line from here on out. And we're going to take these elements and we're going to copy them or mirror them to the other side so we can create an X. So selecting on all this, go to mirror, mirror about this guy, puts it over there, bang. What we should have done before we did that was put our dimensions on this so we can better define this. We'll make that three inches. Make this half an inch. That sounds okay to me. 0.5. Might be a little bit too thick. So how about maybe a 0.3? That shortens that up. And we also need an angle. So let's do this. Let's put an angle between that and uh, maybe the edge. Yeah, that seems appropriate. Maybe 70 degrees. Now let's begin to lock up. And uh, I'm not certain what else we need to do, so let's go ahead and grab some of these endpoints and twist those around. Okay, okay. So perhaps the center line right down the middle of this thing. Make sure we grab the origin as, uh, as an accomplice there. 
Maybe click on this and this and those three elements and let's make this symmetric. That looks good. So I did a symmetric off of the, the, the mirrored entities. So this line, the center line and that line become symmetric. So that looks like it's in pretty good shape. Let's extrude cut. Extrude cut. It's going to go down a certain uh, distance. We do want to select our contours. So let's go ahead and select everything here that we have the opportunity to select, including the middle. So we have a uh, region, region, region. Everything's a region, so that looks good. It's only going to go down a little bit, and it's not going to like this cut in into a void. But here's the option. Go to uh, Offset from Surface. We're going to click on this surface. And you'll notice it's kind of cutting in there just a little bit, a tenth of an inch, which is good. So what it does is it goes up to that surface and then cuts a tenth of an inch into that surface. So that looks like it's in, uh, looks like it's pretty close to what we want. Let's take our plane three, hide that for now, so we don't really need that. And let's do our circular pattern. Parameters, we already have our uh, temporary axis turned on. So let's go ahead and turn on that. And then features to pattern, we're going to feature that guy. And uh, let's put in a little bit more, maybe 36, so we have a lot of tread there. And if you don't get it to resolve right away, remember to click the Geometry Pattern button. Geometry Pattern kind of reduces the complexity of some of the sketch and modeling elements associated with that feature. And it uh, makes it a little bit easier to resolve. And if that works, green check mark. Hmm. Okay, Geometry Pattern. We didn't have that selected and it failed, but now it looks like it's going to go for us. Come on, go baby, go. Come on, stop thinking. There we go. That, to me, is a pretty decent tread pattern. You'll be spending the interim time uh, between mowings cleaning the dirt out of those grooves. You might want to make those grooves a little bit less deep, but yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So in the next film, we'll show you, it's got a real short one, we'll show you how to put your tire and wheel together into an assembly.